Recent reports and play from Gary Trent Jr. have Raptors fans wondering whether or not he is a part of the Toronto Raptors future long term because it seemed like after the early season, after everything that was going on, it was almost a surefire thing that he'd be moving on from the Toronto Raptors this summer, but now it seems like things are changing a little bit. So I'm going to sink my teeth into all the latest news and how he's actually performing to determine whether or not it's likely Gary Trent Jr. will be brought back to the Toronto Raptors. Additionally, we have some updates regarding Spencer Dinwiddie's extremely short tenure with the Toronto Raptors. So lots of stuff to dive into in this video. But again, before we do, folks, over 55% of our viewers are not subscribed to the channel. And we want to keep you up to date with all of the latest Toronto Raptors news. Again, this team is in a little rebuild. They're restructuring the roster, restructuring the team. So if you want to stay up to date with this new era of Toronto Raptors basketball, make sure to subscribe to Raptors Digest. But let's dive in the first topic of discussion. The first thing we're taking a look at is the truth revealed about Gary Trent Jr.'s future with the Toronto Raptors. Now, the Raptors, again are moving in a younger direction. They want more floor spacing. They want players that can dribble, pass, and shoot. And while Gary Trent Jr. isn't known to be an elite facilitator, isn't a guy that's going to be a Darko system, you know, making a ton of crazy passes, setting up players as a playmaker, but he is certainly a floor spacer. On the defensive end, he can bring it when he's engaged and as of late, Gary Trent Jr. has been very solid. And in a recent report from Michael Grange, he basically came out and said that that's all fine regarding Gary Trent Jr. Not every every NBA player has to be a star, but one skill Gary Trent Jr. does have is the ability to knock down open three-point looks. He was 7-11 from uh, deep against the Magic and on his way to a season-high 31 points. Trent Jr. is now shooting 41% from behind the three-point line on six attempts per game, and he's done it coming off the bench and lately as a starter. He's a free agent at the end of the season, and at this point, there would have to be an exclamation as to why the Toronto Raptors didn't bring him back. And that's fair, right? The need for uh, Masai Ujiri to explain why they would let a guy like Gary Trent Jr. walk, who didn't seem to have much value ahead of this year's trade deadline, but also hasn't really been factored into a lot of what the Toronto Raptors' future plans are. Obviously, loading up that guard position, you know, loading up, you know, with RJ Barrett, obviously Grady Dick. A lot of the 10 day players play a similar position to Gary Trent Jr. there now at this point. Bruce Brown, we're also still not sure what's going to happen with him. So there are a lot of two guards on this Toronto Raptors roster. And the question is whether or not we should bring Gary back. Because as Grange brought up, right, 41% from the three-point line. He's only 25 years old, so he's still a young guy that can put up buckets in a hurry. And I mean, over the past five games, he has been ridiculous. You know, putting in 23 points per night, four rebounds, still no, no really no assists for the Toronto Raptors, but shooting 42% behind the three-point line. So He's in a hot stretch right now. The star boy, Gary Trent Jr., he's living up to that star boy nickname coined to him a couple seasons ago. But what's the truth? What's really going to happen with Gary Trent Jr. here now at this point? Because will there be need to be exclamations as, uh, exclamations as uh, Michael Grange just sort of brought up? Or is there a reality where Toronto Raptors fans will look at this and be like, okay, maybe it's for the best that Gary Trent Jr. was traded? Well or was let go, was let walk, maybe sign and trade, see what potentially happens. Personally, I'd like to bring Gary Trent Jr. back, but it all depends on the money. Because for all the games, again, looking at what uh, Gary Trent Jr. did, you know, over this uh, last stretch of five games, remarkable stuff. But if you look at the 11 previous games, uh, prior to this sort of five game stretch, Gary Trent Jr. was only averaging 10 points per game, two rebounds, 1.7 assists, which is solid. Again, the roster looked a little bit different, but 33% from the three-point line. And then, again, this is two weeks ago. Everyone was gunning for Gary Trent Jr.'s head, saying how he's a guy that needs to be traded. He's a guy that needs to be dealt. He doesn't fit this team long-term. So, again, Gary Trent Jr., the reality with him is he is a very up-and-down player. It's been the same case over his entire Toronto Raptors tenure. He's a guy that looked amazing on some nights, putting in the buckets, putting in the basketball, but on other nights just won't really have it. And over the last five games as well, a lot of guys have gone down with injury. There's been a lot of players in and out of the lineups, or well, at least he missed two of the last five games, the last seven games, you know, uh, you know, the last five games Gary Trent Jr. has played in. There's been more opportunities, more opportunities for him to really blossom and score and these types of things. And Frankly, the Raptors have Emmanuel Quickly and R.J. Barrett as the backup spot. So Gary Trent Jr. is going to have to do it with a little bit less run or you know kind of a leash to really get his game going he doesn't really bring it as uh, as an assister and then 
you know, if you're factoring all that in and then you're going to give Gary Trenton a substantial contract to just be off the bench, you have to recognize the inconsistencies he's had playing that role, playing, uh, you know, that sort of secondary option. And then also how will impact the development of a Grady Dick? Heck, even R.J. Barrett, who's a couple years younger and obviously is a more established player in the NBA here now at this point. So... Those are things you have to factor in with Gary Trent Jr.'s sort of potential looming extension. And we can look at comparable contracts because, again, Gary is a guy similar to in the vein of a Duncan Robinson now at this point. You know, not much else on the offensive end either than, you know, just elite shooting. He doesn't finish around the rim that well, but he is hitting at a high clip. Duncan Robinson right now is on a pretty substantial contract. 15, 16, 18, 19, 20 million dollars per year. So that's the type of deal Duncan Robinson has got. And again, his stats aren't so super, super crazy. And then you can also compare him to a Kevin Herter, who is getting around that 15, 16, 17 million dollar per year range. So again, like Herter, you know, his stats for the Atlanta Hawks, a little bit worse than Gary Trent Jr. It's definitely worse than what Gary's were prior at, you know, entering this season. So that's the contract that he was able to earn on the open market. And then Duncan Robinson was horrible for a couple seasons, but is back now for the Miami. He playing well, shooting at a high clip. So comparable players again maybe they bring it less on the defensive end but Duncan Robinson Kevin Herter who have had very much the similar inconsistencies over the course of their careers you're gonna have to pay them at least you know 16 17 18 million dollars per year for Gary Trent Jr that's sort of the market value and then with the cap going up maybe it's gonna inch closer to 20 which was the number I think a lot of people were comfortable with entering the season when again Gary Trent Jr was averaging you know, I don't have his career averages up, but he was averaging 17, 18 points per game for the last couple seasons. That's down to 12, 13 now at this point. So it depends on what we're all comfortable with here. And Masai Jury is particularly comfortable with. But then there's also the factor of a guy that's been on your team and seems to be taking a leadership role as well. Right. Gary Trent Jr. says he took Grady Dick under his wing uh, since camp has been showing the, the rookie the ropes ever since. He says he's been super receptive. He's asking a lot of questions. What kind of questions? You know, on the court, questions about what tattoos he should get, all that types of stuff. So, again, a little, little coy there from Gary Trent Jr. Love to see a Grady Dick with a big neck tattoo there entering next season, but we'll see how that all shakes out. But, no, Gary Trent Jr., again, has been a nice locker and presence, and even for all the ups and downs, even when Raptors fans have wanted his head, and have also been comparing him to a prime Bradley Beal. He seems to be stay level-headed and stay the course, so I'd be happy with Gary Trent Jr. being in the organization for a long time but the truth is the contract the direction of the Toronto Raptors I feel like it's going to be unlikely and team's just going to pay him more out there on the open market than the Raptors are willing for so let me know if you guys agree in the comment section down below but we have another uh sort of topic we have discussed in this one and the real reason the Raptors waived Spencer Dinwiddie and uh, a lot of this is kind of known but uh well the first part of it the second part wasn't known at the time when the Toronto Raptors waived him but Doug Smith came out and addressed Spencer Dinwiddie getting waived in a recent mailbag question he basically brought up he said at no level did a player like Spencer Dinwiddie fit any Toronto Raptors need he wasn't going to make uh, take minutes from the core players and he certainly wasn't a part of the long-term program so he was a vessel to get out of the 12.5 million dollars they owe Dennis Schroeder for next season so that's the reason why the Toronto Raptors ended up dropping Spencer Dinwiddie as soon as they got him they cut him despite the fact he was a solid player you know, coming into the potential Toronto Raptors and stuff but Looking at it, we get why he's uh he wasn't a part of the future because his stats for the LA Lakers this year, you know, four points per game. You might look at that, oh, he's not getting an opportunity or whatever. Well, 23 minutes per game in 14 games for the LA Lakers, he's averaging four points per game on not the greatest efficiency shooting. You know, the Raptors dodge a bullet there, getting rid of him super fast because again, he was only going to eat up minutes from you know, Grady Dick, from Emmanuel Quickly, from R.J. Barrett, from Gary Trent Jr., from all these guys we have in our roster, you know, on those 10-day contracts, just wouldn't have made sense to keep Spencer Dinwiddie around. Maybe to help facilitate the tank, you know, the tank in 2024, maybe he would have been a good guy to have on the roster, but it is what it is. Let me know what you guys think about all this Toronto Raptors news in the comment section down below. Subscribe to the channel if you guys haven't already. I'm signing up. Cheers.